to be here. And um, my presentation today will be partly mine, but mostly it will be on behalf of Evelyn Noam Wusi, who is the leader of the ITA Youth Agripreneurs. Uh, so the ITA Youth Agripreneurs is basically youth led by youth, governed and managed by youth. So I'm basically her voice in, in this workshop today. Now, just to give you a bit of background, because uh, IITA is, is key in this uh, initiative. And IITA, or the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, is one of the CGIR centers. Um, it is based, it has its headquarters in Nigeria, in Ibadan. It's uh, organized around four regional hubs. You can see them here, or maybe you can, in four different colors. You have the West African hub, uh, Central African hub in, in yellow and Eastern Africa in purple and down in the south blue, the Southern African hub. It's a broad agriculture research institute, so around four major research themes, genetic improvement and biotech, so plant um, breeding basically, natural resource management, social science and agribusiness and plant production and plant health about 1,500 employees, an annual budget of 140 million US dollars, and approximately 150 ongoing projects. And they are marked on the top map in red on green, and you cannot see them at all. But trust me, they are located in the humid tropic regions of sub-Saharan Africa. Now, in terms of plant breeding, uh, IITA covers uh, six mandate crops, so those belonging to that Agri those agroecological zones. So cassava uh, and yam, of course, uh, banana, the roots and tubers crops, also grain legumes, cowpea and soybean and maize. Now, that was just the background. So now moving to the IITA Youth Agripreneurs, or IYA. It was, I don't know, could we turn off the lights here so it's possible to see the slides, perhaps? Oh, you can turn off the lights over. <laughs> I see. Well, anyway, um, the group of people here, thank you very much. This is perfect. Uh, it's the first batch of youth agripreneurs, and it dates back to 2012 when um, we had a visit to IITA by the then IFAD president, Kanayo, who spoke very passionately about the problem in Africa in terms of agriculture with its aging population of farmers, paralleled with a very high unemployment of youth, like uh, Costas and Ola were both referring to. And in the room were also uh, about 30 or so National Youth Service Corpus. As soon as you finish your degree, bachelor's degree in Nigeria, you're part of a, uh, the corporate scheme. So you, you make so, social service somewhere in the country, and IITA always get a batch of those. So they were listening in, and one of them asked the question, so, but how do we get into agriculture? I have a bachelor's degree in, in history. I don't know. How can I move into agriculture? And that sort of prompted this program, this question. So, a group of bachelor holders, um, men and women, equal proportion, different disciplines, history, statistics, some in agriculture, biology, computing, anything. But most of them actually facing unemployment when they were leaving their corporate service. So, the DG, Sanginga here in the middle, uh, brought them together and said, do you want to come along? Do you want to join me for another year and start this venture through uh, where we're going to move towards a mindset change? You talked about uh, the mindset, Costas. How can we see agriculture as a livelihood and a business opportunity? How can you get the agripreneurial training across the value chain so you can make a living out of agriculture? Not necessarily with the hole in the ground, but different aspects of agriculture along the value chain. That was two of the objectives, to bring these young um, uh, graduates along. And then, of course, another reason was to, to start, a, well, if you like, a movement that would allow advocacy, to continue the advocacy and resource mobilization for youth in agriculture. And it was a lot, learning by doing. 
It was really the spur of the moment. Let's get started. Eve had put in some money so they could get going. Now, in 2017, this group is about 385 members big, and we have eight different groups in Nigeria, three in, in DR Congo, one in Uganda, one in Kenya, one in Tanzania, and they're starting up in Malawi as well. And you have some of the teams here. So their major activities is, of course, the capacity building again and business incubation activities across all these locations. They're engaged in production and value addition, so pure agricultural production, but also further processing. And then advocacy and resource mobilization for expansion of youth in agribusiness activities. So those are the big headings. And uh, here, well, you can't see, but this is just a table detailing out what the different groups are doing. Uh, and I will give you a few examples later on. So this sums up to the 385 members. You have a range of different groups and different activities. Now, to give you a few examples, um, the most popular activity is aquaculture, fish. There's a lot of money in, in catfish, so a lot of fish production is going on. Uh, soy milk, various other soy products, cassava, of course, being a staple in many of these countries, so just the production of cassava, but also further uh, 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 processing of cassava into high-quality cassava flour, big business in DRC, for instance, various types of snacks mixed with cassava flour and cowpea or soybean to make them more nutritious. Uh, poultry is coming up very strongly, both eggs and meat. Uh, production of seedlings, plants, there you have plantain suckers, mushrooms, big deal in, in DRC, for instance. And then training of other youth, uh, vegetable production, and the more innovative team here in Uganda are actually doing online marketing of vegetables. So you can order online your vegetables and get them delivered to your workplace. Resource mobilization is another uh, thing where they have been training. So we have a core team that are, well, growing, but it's part of the, the team that started in 2012. And they've become pretty skilled at resource mobilization. So they have a project to, funded by USAID called Hello Tractor, about 100 participants. Um, so these are Uber tractors, smart tractors. So one youth have three tractors, and then you can... Um, check out where the nearest one is, and you can rent them for a service on your farm field. Chevron, it's uh, operating in the Niger Delta, where they're uh, advocating cassava, fish, and plantain production, 120 participants. Uh, the Gates is funding, and this is because of a, a personal friendship between Bill Gates and the governor of Borno State, uh, a program with 130 participants, where 50% of those have started uh, businesses or established businesses in maize, soybean, groundnut fabrication, spray services. Uh, um, not only uh, capacity development, but more linking to both development and somehow research is the Ag Youth Lab, a new uh, project by the MasterCard Foundation, collaboration with Michigan State University and several partners including ITA uh, and also uh, Sokoini University in Tanzania, engaging, planned engaging 10,000 youth in Nigeria and 6,000 in, in Tanzania, uh, involving the private sector very strongly and here focusing on horticulture, aquaculture, poultry, cassava and the oilseed sector. So a number of, of projects. So we're looking both at the hands-on level but also at the higher level in terms of advocacy, lobbying, bringing in more funds. A uh, final example here is the Enable Youth Program. This was a, uh, started at, out with a conference in 2014 in Ibadan, uh, jointly organized by the African Development Bank and IITA, uh, bringing in um, youth, NGOs, government representatives, policymakers, private sector, to a big meeting discussing youth un unemployment and agriculture. So this was the starting point for developing a program called ENABLE, which is an acronym for Empowering Novel Agribusiness-Led Employment for Youth. 
It's funded by the African Development Bank. As of now, it's operational in Nigeria, Cameroon, DRC, Kenya, Tanzania, Sudan, Zambia, Malawi, and Uganda. But about 30 sub-Saharan African countries have requested support from the AFDB and technical assistance from IITA. So it builds partly on the IITA Agripreneur model, but also on the AGRA model, focusing more on uh, youth without the bachelor's degrees and uh, in agricultural areas. So we don't need to go into the details here, but it is a, a fairly elaborate programs with many components in terms of an enabling environment, entrepreneurship and agribusiness incubation, business development and financing, project management, so training and, and facilitation in these areas, and some bold targets um, in terms of, of uh, job creation, investment in, in a number of countries, and job um, number of enterprises created, and uh, graduates employed. So I was also asked to talk about the global interfaces for this uh, initiative. And of course it is, per se, the uh, IITA Youth Agripreneurs is, is a broad continental network with, uh, with uh, representation in, in many African countries as is. Uh, and it's extended beyond Af Africa through research collaboration, as I referred to before. And we do have a um, north-south and youth-to-youth -youth, uh, link established, at least, between the ITA Youth Agripreneurs and the Landmester of the um, Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. And that's one starting point. And, and of course, it will be very interesting to look at other potential networking and collaboration opportunities. And with that, I'd like to thank you. Ulva.